Alright, in this demonstration we're going to talk about associative arrays. So go ahead and open up basic.php and we're going to go ahead and do a save as and of course we're going to save it into our dev folder as array underscore associative. Okay. Okay, and there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and title it to associative array. Alright, so let's go down here in the PHP block and to save some uh, time for a lot of typing, I'm going to go ahead and paste an array that I have declared in here. Okay, And the thing I want to go ahead and point out is uh, this is a, a variable named employee. Okay, And we're going to assign the variable to a compound data type, which is not going to be an array and these are going to be all of the keys and values that are going to go into that array. So for instance first name uh, is going to have the value of Tom, the key of last name is going to have a value of Robertson, and so on. And what I want you to notice here that's really different than the indexed array is that with the indexed array you had to have an integer as the key. It's just the way it is. Indexed arrays can only have integers for the keys whereas an associative array can have other types for the keys. In this case, th they're all strings. Okay, And in fact, if you notice something, we actually have even the, the number values as strings. Um, we don't have to do that, of course. We could have those be integers, right? Um, and it's up to you. And remember, PHP will do data type switching. But if you actually wanted to sort of do it more properly, where you're performing math and so on, you could go ahead and change those uh, the string values where we have numbers into um, integer values or float values where the case may be appropriate. Um, all right, so here we have this array, and now we need to do something with it. Okay, so in the last demonstration we talked about using the printr function, so let's do that again. We're going to go print underscore r and we're going to choose uh, to pass the employee array as the parameter and remember also too if we want to have it preformatted we need to go ahead and echo out excuse me I didn't mean to type that uh, we need to go ahead and echo out some pre tags so I'm going to create a string here called pre for the beginning tag and then at the end of it we're going to go ahead and echo out um, the ending pre tag. Okay. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and save this. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go up to Firefox and let's refresh the screen. So now we have our array associative. Click on that and here we have our um, array inspection. So you can see here that everything that we did um, is showing up just fine. Okay, so let's go back to Dreamweaver and that's all very simple and straightforward. Um, but uh, I actually want to also point something out that I didn't really discuss during the um, uh, last demonstration with indexed arrays is that you'll notice here whenever we're actually declaring the array in our code, um, you'll see that we have uh, the strings quotation marks around the actual keys and the values that are strings. But if you go back, oh, well, and also the keys don't have brackets around them. Okay, so two things. One is that the keys don't have brackets around them and, and the other is that you'll see that we have quotation marks around all the strings here. But if we go back to Firefox, you'll notice that the keys here have brackets and nothing has quotation marks around it. The reason I'm bringing this up is because some of you might be kind of tempted to go, oh, I'm just going to copy this array inspection, like maybe off of a web page or something, and just paste it into your code view expecting it to work. Well, this isn't going to work. It's going to throw errors all over the place. This is the way that the array inspection looks. It's not the way you actually declare it. So let's go back to Dreamweaver and 
just pay close attention to the fact that this is the way that you need to declare your arrays. Okay, and then really the last thing that I want to go over just very briefly is something that you could also be able to sort of glean from the last uh, lecture and demo, and that is how do you actually call out a specific um, key from an array? So if you wanted to echo out a specific key, let's say that we want to know how much um, this employee makes, then we would go ahead and we would echo employee and then with brackets around it, you would echo out the um, uh, pay rate. Okay, let's type in pay rate. Okay, and but real quickly also, you have to put single quotes around pay rate when they're inside these brackets here. Okay, and this way it knows, this is just the syntax whenever you're calling it out if it's a string. Okay, so you've got to put in single quotes inside these brackets, so you want to call out pay rate. So let's go ahead and save that. We'll go up to Firefox, hit refresh, and you see that we get the pay rate of 13.5, so he makes $13.50 per hour. Um, okay, so if we go down to um, Dreamweaver again, you might want to sort of think back to something else that we've already done, and you could say, oh, okay, well, let's also go ahead and we're going to put number format around this entire thing right here. And what you would do is put a comma and two, and you could put um, basically what you're calling out here is the employee pay rate with two decimal places for the number format. So let's give that a shot. Save, Firefox, refresh, and you can see that we've got 1350. Okay, well if you wanted to format this so that it actually has a dollar symbol in front of it. Um, you could also go ahead and uh, do dollar symbol with a concatenation mark, right? And then this way it'll print this dollar symbol and because we're using single quotes it'll actually see the dollar symbol as a normal dollar symbol and instead of some PHP thing, let's go ahead and save it and Firefox, refresh, and see now we have an actual dollar looking amount from our code right here. Okay, so I just wanted to show you really quickly how you can not only access something from an array but go ahead and do something somewhat useful with it potentially. Okay, so that's going to be the end of our associative array demonstration.